Okay, in this video we're going to look at the basics of homogeneous linear differential equations with constant coefficients. So let's break down exactly what that means. <clears throat> so homogeneous means that there are no free um, functions. So in other words, all our differential equations may be set equal to zero and everything on the other side of the equation has a y in it. So for example, y double prime squared plus y plus maybe plus y prime plus xy equals zero. So notice on the left hand side of the equation we have stuff with all y's and on the right hand side of the equation we have zero. So that makes it homogeneous, just like a homogeneous linear um, equation or system of linear equations. So let's look at another one, maybe y prime plus x sine y equals zero. So there's another one. And maybe a non-example would be something like y double prime plus y prime equals cosine of x. So this is a non-example. The cosine of x means it's non-homogeneous. Okay, good. So next, let's look at the word linear. So by linear, we mean that all of the y's and their derivatives are only appear in a linear form within the differential equation. So for example, here we have y prime and it's just by itself. It's not wrapped up in any other function. Same thing here, y, but here we have y double prime, so this is non-linear. Same thing here, we have sine of y, so this is not linear. However, this one that we x'd out is linear. So let's look at some examples. So maybe x, y, triple prime plus cosine of x times y prime equals zero. So that would be an example of something that's linear and homogeneous. Okay, good. So let's maybe look at another example. e to the x, y double prime plus 3x, y equals zero. So there's another example. So you have to be careful here. Linear is always talking about what's happening with the dependent variable and its derivatives, not what's happening with the independent variable. So we have cosine of x here, that's obviously nonlinear. And e to the x is also nonlinear in x. But when we talk about a linear differential equation, we're talking about linearity in the dependent variable. In this case, we're using y. So now let's look at maybe a non-example. We could have y double prime plus y squared equals zero. So this is not linear because we have y squared. Okay, great. So next, let's talk about constant coefficients. So co coefficients of what? Well, it's coefficients of y and its derivatives. So in this case, we have x is a coefficient of y triple prime, cosine of x is a coefficient of y prime, e to the x in this example is a coefficient of y double prime, and so on and so forth. So the coefficients of the dependent variable and their derivatives need to be constants. So let's look at some examples of that. So constant coefficients. So maybe 3 y double prime plus 2 y prime plus y equals 0. So this satisfies all of these. We have constant coefficients, it's linear in the dependent variable, and it's homogeneous. So let's look at another example, y um, maybe quadruple prime minus y double prime plus y equals zero. So there's another example of something with constant coefficients. And just to continue this theme, let's look at one without constant coefficients. So maybe x, y prime plus y equals zero. So this is a non-example because we have x is not a constant coefficient. Okay, good. Now I'll clean up the board and we'll look towards solving differential equations of this form. Okay, so now that we've defined the terms homogeneous, linear, and constant coefficients, we can look at maybe the simplest such differential equation and then build a method for solving these things. So maybe let's look at some first order examples first. So all of these will be of the form 
a y prime plus b y equals zero. So there we have homogeneous, we have a zero on the right hand side of the equation, linear and the dependent variable and constant coefficients. So we're assuming the little a and the little b are constants. So now notice this is not an interesting differential equation if a is equal to zero. So we'll assume that a is not equal to zero which means we might as well divide the whole thing by a and that tells us that the most general first order such differential equation is y prime plus now let's say k times y equals zero where k is b over a in this case. Now, this type of differ differential equation is pretty simple to solve. It's separable. You can also maybe guess the solution. So maybe we could do something like this. Y prime equals negative K times Y. And then think to yourself, do I know a function that when I take the derivative, I get the same function back times a negative K? And you do. So this should be E to the minus KX but then we have a constant in front. <clears throat> so this is the solution. Now you might think that you could also integrate both sides here. Or, sorry, you could also do some sort of separation of variables to write this as uh, y prime over y equals minus k and then take the antiderivative dx and you'll end up with the same thing. So I'll skip those steps. So first order differential equation is quite simple in this case. So now let's look at this solution and this will give us some motivation for what happens in the more general case. Okay, so let's look at a more general case of this type of differential equation. So generally we could write a sub n y the nth derivative of this plus a sub n minus one, the n minus first derivative and so on. So a one, the first derivative plus a zero, the zeroth derivative, which is just y itself equals zero. Now from our last example, we saw that an exponential function was a solution to a different uh, differential equation if we were in first order. So let's maybe guess that a good place to look may be an exponential function. So let's set y equal to c times e to the rx. And now notice that tells us that y prime equals c times r e to the rx using the chain rule, which notice that is just r times y. And then also we can continue this. y double prime is just equal to c r squared e to the rx, which is equal to r squared times y. And in fact, here you can notice that the kth derivative, in this case, will be r to the k times the original function y. Just because the derivative of an exponential function is pretty simple. So now what we'll do is plug this rule for the kth derivative of this exponential function into our differential equation and see what we get. So here we'll have a sub n r to the n times y plus a sub n minus 1 r to the n minus 1 times y plus so on and so forth until we get a 1 r times y plus a 0 y. And so we know that if this is a solution, this should be equal to 0. But now we have some like terms here. We can factor a y out of every term. And we get that a n r to the n plus a 0 times y must be equal to 0. But now notice, this is a polynomial that's been evaluated at r.
And so we know that we probably don't want y to be identically zero, which means we want this polynomial to be equal to zero if we're going to solve this differential equation. So <clears throat> if this is indeed a solution to this differential equation, then that tells you that r must be a root of a polynomial which looks exactly like our differential equation, but we've replaced the derivatives with some exponent of a variable. So I'll say u, so a sub n, u n, plus a n minus 1, u n minus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus a 1 u, plus a naught, if it's a root of that polynomial. So in a following video, we'll do a bunch of examples of something like this, but what we notice here is we've uh, simplified the task of finding a solution to this differential equation to finding the root of a polynomial.